Welcome back to the DFS Sweatshop. I am your host, the DFS Jerusalem, and you can follow me on Twitter at DFS Jerusalem. We are here uh, reviewing the fabulous slate of games that took place on uh, November the first. New month uh, had a didn't have a very good October. Uh, it got better towards the end. November starting off right. Um, Entered some 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 good lineups. Developed a nice core of players, uh, and and I and I, I shared that core of players too with all of my followers, all all of the followers of the sweatshop on YouTube. Uh, I shared that core of players because <clears throat> we ain't like the rest of them people, man. We, yo, we. I'm just gonna tell you the truth. If if that means that you're gonna be on players that I'm gonna be on, if it, I don't know, I don't know. I'm just I'm a sharing person. If I feel something and. I'm gonna tell you the truth, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring it out, and I'm gonna talk about it. And uh, the, you know, the first thing that we always do is I show you my lineup of the night. This is the one um, that, luckily today, uh, because a lot, a lot of luck is involved in the way I do this. This uh, this is my best lineup was the one that I entered in the single entry uh, GPP. So we're gonna go and uh, check it out first. Go over that lineup. And break down um, the slate for last night's games that are already done and over with. Well, I think um, Golden State and Portland are still playing. They, they're doing a little scrub love thing, but we ain't got nobody in those games. So, um, first, now we knew there were four guys that we really, really, really wanted um, to have exposure to, and we couldn't get them in every lineup, but we got them. Uh, and as, as much of them as we could in, in, in different spots. And uh, I'm going to highlight the guys to you as we, we go through it. Now, we started here at point guard with Tim Frazier. He was more or less, we got forced into playing Tim Frazier because he was the chalk. And we were playing uh, the single entry GPPs, which are very similar to cash game. It's like the perfect mix of a cash game and a tournament, the single entry GPPs. Because guys give their best shot, their, their, their surest bet. But... They also tweak the lineup a little bit to add that tournament flair to where you can get uh, low owned guys that will keep you different from the field because you're not trying to just get into the top half. You're trying to get into the top 17% in these tournaments. So, of course, we started with Tim Frazier. I believe he was about 30% owned in this particular GPP. He went out, he had three rebounds, uh, a three, made a three pointer, had nine assists. He was just shy of the double double bonus. 20 points, uh, four steals, which were really big. The four steals and three turnovers, that is big. Whenever you can get more steals than turnovers from a point guard, that's somebody that you know is being careful and safe with the ball. You can look at him going forward for that reason. Now, I wanted a piece of that Philadelphia game, which is why um, I took a shot at uh, Gerald Henderson. And, I mean, he was very close to minimum salary. I believe about 3.2K, but he's a starter. He's a starter going up against a bad uh, Orlando team. I liked him, so I, I, I had him here, and he more than returned value. He had four rebounds, one assist, one steal, one turnover, 18 points, and he scored 26 DraftKings points. The next guy was somebody who I didn't think a lot of people was going to be on. I, I didn't think anybody was going to be on him. So he is the reason why he made it to my roster is because I thought if anybody – was going to this game, they would not have gone to this guy. They would have went to more towards Markeith, uh, Markeith Morris. So, uh, Marcus Morris, excuse me. So, it was Tobias Harris against my New York Knicks. He had an awesome game. He had 10 rebounds, 25 points, uh, made a couple threes, hit the double double bonus, three assists, a block, and three turnovers for 45 DK points. Uh, the next guy, he's somebody who I've just been high on all year. Uh, Stadius Young going against the Lakers. I definitely wanted a piece of that um, Indiana Lakers game. This this lineup actually started out as an Indiana stack, but I just did not like um, Jeff Teague. I did not like Jeff Teague, so he ended up uh, exiting the lineup to make way for Tim Frazier, so that I could fit more 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 uh, more guys in the cat. Him and Chris Dunn. That's the, that's how I was able to get Anthony Davis into this lineup. I love Davis all day, um, but the guy who I was the most highest on for this entire slate for the day 
when I got the news that Joel, I mean, uh, that um, Okafor was going to be out, then they traded Jeremy Grant. I was like, oh my God, I am firing up Joel Embiid. I think I had him in 90% of my lineups. And he went out and had a monster game, especially uh, taking into consideration that he was on the 24 minute uh, restriction. He saw about 25 minutes. Uh, he went out and just had 10 rebounds, uh, 18 points, four blocks, which was big, three assists, four turnovers. We really want to see the turnovers be less than that, but he still had an awesome game. He scored 42.5 DraftKings points. Going back to Thaddeus Young, he had 33 solid. Uh, Chris Dunn, I started him because he was the chalk. Everybody in the single injury GPPs was going to be on him. He, I looked at him, and he was probably about 34% owned, uh, especially when I got the news that, uh, Mike Conley and um, Gasol were going to be out. I think the lineup had locked before I knew that, but once I th I saw that, I was like, Phew, I'm glad I started Chris Dunn. And he went out and he had 33 and a half drafting points, four rebounds, 10 points, made a couple threes, six assists, five steals, which were big, more steals than turnovers. Uh, Anthony Davis, of course, has been uh, electrifying this year. Man, he's lighting it up, and. Um, He's somebody that I wanted to get in my lineups, and uh, I, he, 15 rebounds, 35 points, uh, two assists, three blocks, three steals, one turnover, uh, hit the double-double bonus for 69.75 DK points, and uh, in my utility spot, I have Paul George. And Paul George is going to have these games. He's going to have these Paul George games where he quietly goes off, and it hadn't happened yet. But I, I, against the Lakers, I really felt like Paul George was going to be a good play, and it worked out really good. This entire lineup uh, went for, to the tune of 344.25 DraftKings points, so I am a part of the 300 Club tonight. Thank you. But tonight seemed like everybody, every guy in the NBA was on tonight. Like, all the players went off. So this lineup didn't get the return that I had. You, if you told me, hey, Maurice, you're going to you're gonna go out, you know what I'm saying, and, and you're going to look at your lineup, it's going to be 344 points. I'd have been like, hell yeah, I done took down some shit. But that's not what happened. That's not what happened. So, all right. Uh, now, we are going to, well, actually, and, and then let me, let, me, let me go back and show you um, the line that, Cause I had this was like I had this line everywhere. Okay. There were four players today, who I absolutely loved, and I shared them with everybody. I mean, I told you, hey, that this is this is who I love. Goran Dragic, I loved him against um, Sacramento. He finished with uh, eight rebounds, uh, five three-pointers, eight assists, two blocks, two steals, three turnovers, and 25 points. He was actually on the triple-double watch for a moment because this game went into overtime. Uh, I also loved, of course, Joel, Joel Embiid. We talked about him already. I loved uh, Damian Lillard and Anthony Davis. Most of the lineups that I had tonight, I started with those four players. Uh, that, that's what I do. You know, when I feel really strongly, and you're gonna see like it's tomorrow. There's certain rules of DFS that, as a seasoned player, and I say that because I've been playing for the last few years. As a seasoned player, there's just things that I am going to take advantage of, like the whole Lowry DeRozan thing from the other night. Well, guess what? That's gonna happen again tonight too. I love Lowry and DeRozan tonight. Another thing, Kimba. Kimba's at home, uh, coming up <clears throat> tonight. I love Kimba's at home. He must have like. Uh, a couple of girls that he that he's dating that comes to the game. He shows the fuck out in Charlotte, but he will go somewhere else and lay an egg. So I, I like Kemba tonight. But let's go ahead and jump into the uh, the, the the overall uh, recap of tonight's games. We are going to start in Cleveland uh, with the Houston Rockets taking on the Cavaliers. Really good game from LeBron James. Now, this had no DFS significance for DraftKings players, but if you play on FanDuel, you were able to get some of these guys in your roster. I did start a couple of FanDuel lineups, and I had, like, only guy I had from this game was Eric Gordon, but James Harden went the fuck off. 
uh, he finished with, and, and forgive me, I'm still fighting, battling through my cold. He had 41 points, 7 uh, rebounds, 15 assists, so he was on a triple-double watch, and had one steal and a block. Uh, Ryan Anderson, in 30 minutes, had 12 points, 4 rebounds, and, a, and an assist. We didn't get much from Trevor Ariza in this game. Uh, 31 minutes, a lot of minutes, 11 points, 1 rebound, and 2 assists. Eric Gordon, who I really liked, he kind of filled the stat sheet up a little bit. Didn't score like a ton of points, but he had 16 points, seven rebounds. Uh, excuse me, six, 16 points, two rebounds, three assists, and two steals in 32 minutes. Off of the bench, we got nothing because, of course, you know they were behind uh, behind just enough to still think they were in the game the entire game. So they really didn't get much off of the bench. Um, I believe Corey Brewer led, led in bench minutes, nine points, three rebounds, and two assists with a block. Uh, LeBron was his usual self, 19 points, 13 rebounds, eight assists. He was on a triple-double watch. Um, Kevin Love in 30 minutes had 24 points and five rebounds. But Kyrie was, was, the, was the big winner in this game. He had 32 points, uh, two rebounds, four assists. Uh, Richard Jefferson came off the bench, 19 minutes. Uh, Preston Shumpert, excuse me. Iman Shumpert, Preston Shumpert used to play for the Syracuse Orange Man. That was one of my favorite players growing up. Uh, Iman Shumpert, 25 minutes, had eight points and two rebounds with one assist and two steals. And uh, moving on to the next game, because that game really had no significance uh, as far as DraftKings went. It was the Orlando and the Philadelphia game. There was a lot to like in this game. Both teams were very bad defensively, so if you uh, took our advice from last night and you got on the Orlando big, you kind of you did what you needed to do. Uh, Vucevic, he had in 31 minutes, he had 24 points, 14 rebounds, four assists, one steal, and one block. Uh, Evan Fournier, 17 uh, points, five rebounds, five assists, and Alfred Payton had 18 points, 10 assists, three rebounds, two steals, and a block. Aaron Gordon let you down. Aaron Gordon really didn't play a, a good game, and he, he was like uh, second on the team in minutes, but he just didn't have very valuable possessions while he was on the floor. Serge Ibaka had 21 points, four rebounds, and two blocks. And uh, Biombo in 20 minutes had two points, eight rebounds, and two assists. He is not an offensive threat at all, but he has some really solid rebounding. Now, on the Philadelphia side of the ball, this is where a lot of the value came in uh, throughout the day, because if you had Dario Saric, I salute you because he got you 20 points, three rebounds, one assist, and one steal. Had a really good game for you. Uh, Gerald Henderson, really talked about him, had a really good game for me. Joel Embiid, 18, 10, and three with four blocks. That was nice. And Sergio Rodriguez, how about him, man? 12 points, uh, five rebounds, 11 assists. He had a really good game. And Hollis Thompson actually jumped off to the bench and had 22 points in 28 minutes with seven boards and one uh, assist. I was contemplating going uh, Hollis Thompson or um, uh, Rashawn Holmes, and I went with Rashawn Holmes. I mean, he didn't really disappoint. The salary was so cheap, he was 3.6K, but he had 6.7 rebounds, two assists, and a block. The next game we're going to get into is going to be the LA Lakers at the Indiana Pacers. I really like Monte Ellis going into this game. Actually, I, I was stacking the shit out of this anyway, but I just got off of it throughout the day when news was popping up and things were going on. You've got to, you've got to be like that. You've got to be changeable and be able to move with the ebb and flows of what goes on uh, as far as coaching decisions, in, uh, uh, injuries, things of that nature. Uh, Lou Alding on the Lakers side had 10 points, six rebounds, and an assist. Judy's, nobody really shined on the Lakers side in this game. I mean, we're talking nine points and ten boards from Grant, from Randall, which is cool. Uh, Nick Young had eight and four. Uh, D'Angelo Russell, 11 points, three assists. I mean, uh, Jordan Clarkson came off the bench at 15 and one in 30 minutes. I mean, nobody really, really shined, but they stayed in the game the entire game. Uh, on, the, on the Indiana side of the ball, Paul George he put up 30, seven rebounds. One assist, four steals, and a block. So he filled the stat sheet up. Thad Young, who I really liked all year long, 14 points, uh, six rebounds, three assists, and two steals. Uh, Miles Turner. I told you I did not like Miles Turner in this matchup. I did not like Miles Turner in this matchup. He's somebody who I just didn't think was worth that 7.3K. And uh, he went out and had nine points, 
six rebounds, two assists, and two blocks. Now, don't get me wrong now. I, I, I'm just like you. A lot of things, a lot of things that I'm sharing with you are gut feelings, things that I'm watching. It's a combination of everything. Being a seasoned DFS player, you know, watching the games, you know, um, uh, all of that. So these are not anything, any, um, anything out of the realm of possibility for you. These are not calls that you couldn't make, right? It's just when I feel strongly about something, just like when I, when you feel strongly about something, I want you to let me know. When you, I'm talking about when you, when you feel a strong conviction. You, you jump up and you let me know. And if you notice, I'm not going to do that all the time. Every day, I'm not going to have this super hot take like they do on Roto Grinders and like they do on, um, you know, Fantasy Lab. Sometimes I'm just rolling with the flow. But when I do, when I have a super hot take, I'm going to let you know. And I'm going to let you know not only with um, what I'm saying, but you're going to see it in my lineups. Right. I'm not trying to steer you off of any plays or anything like that. Right. It's family. Sweatshop, DFS sweatshop. You know what I'm saying? So uh, that pretty much wraps up the Indiana side of the ball. Now I had a, one of my one of my good uh, Twitter followers, man, a dude that always uh, chops it up with me. He was trying to put me on a CJ Miles. He had 16 points, two rebounds, and uh, one steal and a block. That's pretty good production for somebody with that cheap of salary. I'm gonna look at him going forward since uh, since uh, the other. The other, the other Stucky, Stucky is out. So that was a really, really good uh, performance from him uh, at close to minimum salary in 20, 22 minutes. Next game I'm going to get into is going to be the Sacramento Kings at the Miami Heat. You know what? I felt kind of bad uh, when I was building my lineups because I look, I look, and I had no white side, and that's not like me. Like he's a player that I had, I, I roster like all the time. When 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 DK sends you those little things and you know, oh all year uh, this is the person that you rostered the most blah, blah, blah. you it, 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 white side, but I just didn't like him. I just didn't like him in this matchup. I thought that I could get a lot more for a lot less, uh, and I just loved Embiid so much that you know it kind of took me off white side. He had a decent game. Uh, I believe he I believe he double doubled. I think he had 14 points, uh, 11 rebounds, one steal, and two blocks. But the story of this game was going tragic, man. He went out 25, 8, 8, 2, 2. I'm talking about filled it up. Was on a triple double watch for uh for during during the uh, overtime, which he didn't even score that much in the overtime. Um, Luke Babbitt, who I had in some lineups and jerked him out, he had 10 points and one rebound. Uh, Justice Winslow, 9, 3, 7, and 1. And uh, you also got Tyler Johnson off of the bench in 32 minutes, had 22 points, four rebounds, two assists. Uh, two steals and two blocks. So if you if you got a piece of uh, Tyler Johnson, you really you really made value on that uh, on the Sacramento side of the ball. Rudy Gay, man, you know what? I don't like Rudy Gay, so I never really have him. But I mean, he's going off. He's having a, he's having a fantastic start to the season. Thirty points, twelve uh, rebounds, one assist, one steal. Uh, Boogie, I didn't like Boogie today. There's going to be a few times uh, out of the year that I don't like Boogie. Tonight was one of those times. He had a decent game, 30 points, 7 rebounds, 4 assists, and a block, but that is not, you need more. You need more. For 10K, you need way more than that. And, it's, you know, he did not make the value that we were set out to have, you know, when we roster uh, somebody uh, that high. Uh, Ty Lawson finally came back down to earth. I didn't like him. didn't have him anywhere. 36 minutes, 2 points, 5 rebounds, 4 assists, and we knew that this is not a good matchup for point guards. We knew that on the perimeter, uh, Miami was a really stout defense. So, you know, I, I'm surprised. If anybody in the sweatshop went Ty Lawson, I would be surprised because we are some sharp players in here, right? Uh, Matt Barnes, man, he was fool's goal. I didn't I'd have Matt Barnes anywhere. Zero points, eight rebounds, two assists, and one steal. The next game we're going to get into, my New York Knicks traveling to Detroit to the Motor City to take on uh, the Detroit Pistons. And Carmelo Anthony had a good game. He's somebody who is really hard for me to roster because he just doesn't do all of the other things I need a, a forward to do. You know what I mean? Like, he, you were, you were guaranteed to not get hit the double-double bonus with Carmelo Anthony. He is so scoring dependent. But tonight he had 24 points, two rebounds, one assist, and four steals. Porzingis had 18, uh, six rebounds, and one assist. Joe Kim Noah, who was talking shit after the game, had two points and 12 rebounds with eight assists. 
and uh, Derrick Rose had a pretty good game. He played 31 minutes, had 19 points, 5 rebounds, and 2 assists with Brandon Jennings getting 26 minutes off of the bench, uh, 12 points, 2 rebounds, and 3 assists. On the, on the Houston side, I mean, excuse me, on the Detroit side of the ball, I saw a lot over here that I liked. Tobias Harris really went over that 25-10-3 with a block. Uh, Marquise Morris had 22-4-1 and one with a steal. And Andre Drummond did not hit a double-double bonus. He had 9 points, 13 rebounds, 2 assists, 2 steals, and 1 block. KCP was somebody who I had in a lot of different spots. I liked him. At, when I went with those four players, I sprinkled in guys who I really liked. You know, and I, and it was so funny because I, I didn't get the, the, right combina the right combination of those guys. I could have really hit, hit it big tonight. We tripled our buy-in. That's all that matters. We move on to the next night. It's an 82-game season. What we're like four games in, we're good, right? Uh, Bino Udri came off the bench. John Law was somebody who I really had. I had in a few different spots. He had 25 minutes, 8.6 rebounds, a steal, and a block. So there wasn't that much in this game to take a hold of. I mean, if you didn't jump on uh, Tobias Harris or Marquise Morris, you, you probably didn't didn't get much out of this game. The next game is going to be the Milwaukee Bucks traveling to New Orleans to take on the Pelicans. The brow went off. We already saw that. 69.75 points. Uh, man, uh, Tim Frazier. I, I, I didn't want to drink the Kool-Aid on Tim Frazier, but, man, that dude's good. He's good. He's just good. And he, and he plays well with... Uh, with uh, um, Anthony Davis. Like, they play well together. They play off of each other. Um, Stephen Hill, man, he went on had 18.6 rebounds, four assists, and two steals. That was nice for him in 35 minutes. That's a lot of playing time for for Hill, for uh, Sol Solomon Hill, excuse me. Etuan um, Moore, 17 points. Anthony Davis, of course, at 35 and 15 with two assists and three steals. And Tim Frazier, 23-9 four and one. Uh, Omar Asik saw 13 minutes. A starter saw 13 minutes. Right? Mm. Uh, Buddy Heald, 13 minutes, had 10 points and one steal. On the Milwaukee side of the ball, Giannis was good. I had him in a couple spots. Didn't love him as much as I should have because he had a really good game. He had, uh, in 33 minutes, he had 24 points, 10 rebounds, seven assists, and one steal with two blocks. Uh, Mason Plumley, uh, 14 minutes. Why is this dude starting? Just put uh, Greg Monroe in the freaking game. Jason Kidd is like the hard, the, the worst. He he's he's the one that scares me off of players. Him and Popovich. I fucking hate uh, the way Jason Kidd coaches this team because it's horrible. It's horrible. Uh, Tony Snell, whoa, 13 and 10 with two assists. Uh, he was just traded there the other day. Carter Williams. Got sent away to Chicago, and uh, dude, dude balled out. Tony Snell balled out, and I'll probably never say that again, but he did. Uh, Memphis and Minnesota, we are still waiting on Memphis to get off the plane. They did not show up for this game. What the fuck? Now, that was weird. Um, for some reason, I just didn't like this game. The only place I went in this entire game and all my lineups was Chris Dunn because I knew he was going to be so chalky that I had to play him in my single entry GPPs. I just didn't like anything in this game. I just didn't like, I just didn't really, I wasn't really drawn to anything. So luckily, luckily uh, when the Gasol news and the uh, Conley news broke, you know, it didn't really affect my lineups because I didn't have them anywhere. But you know, I kind of dodged that bullet. That was a landmine that I dodged. A lot of, a lot of us weren't that lucky, but I mean, I'm glad that that, that happened the way it did. Uh, on the Memphis side of the ball, man, nothing really special happened. You had uh, the Wade Baldwin dude with 8-3. I mean, just a shitty performance, man. Fuck, dude. They, it was horrible. That was a horrible game. And uh, the good thing about it is, well, there's a, there was a positive and a negative. The people that played Minnesota guys, they still hit value in like three quarters. The good thing is they did sit them during the fourth. And they let um, the one guy that I had roster, roster. They let him stay on the floor. He did score a little bit of points, and that was uh, Chris Dunn. In 29 minutes, he had 10 points, four rebounds, six assists, and five steals. Gorgie Jang went out there in 33 minutes, 17 points, six rebounds, two assists, three steals, two blocks. And he filled up the stat sheet all across the board. Uh, Wiggins, 17, uh, three rebounds and four assists. Levine was a really, really great play in this game too. Uh, see, I was I was on either one or the other. 
But when I started to get so many Anthony Davis in my lineup, I look around and I was like, yo, I have no Levine. Because I was Chris Dunn everywhere and I was Anthony Davis, um, Damian Lillard, uh, you know, Joel Embiid, and Goran Dragic. I had, you know, I had them cats everywhere. So that's just how, how that worked out. Uh, now, also we had uh, Cat Man Towns. Not a very great game. 29 points, excuse me, 29 minutes. He had 11 points, 10 rebounds, 4 assists, a steal, and a block. Next game we're going to get into is going to be the Utah uh, Jazz going to San Antonio and beating the ass. How about that? I didn't see that coming. I thought the game was going to be a blowout in the other direction, so I stayed away from the game completely. I was very lucky tonight. Very lucky tonight. Uh, Joe Johnson. we still waiting on another one of those Joe Johnson games we had from the other night. But tonight he had eight points, three rebounds, five assists, and one steal, which is respectable. Not a very, not a bad game at all. George Hill led all of the Utah scorers with 22 points, two rebounds, seven assists, one steal. We got to admit, George, George uh, Hill is the real deal. George Hill is the real deal. And I don't think Dante Exum is going to uh, take that starting job from him at all, like I thought at the beginning of the year. I was wrong about that. I can admit it. Trey Lyles jumped off to the bench and had 15 points. Seven rebounds and three assists in 28 minutes. Rudy Gobert, not a good scoring night for Rudy, but he has six points and 12 rebounds. So I guess he kind of made it up on the back end. But that salary, as high as it was, that, that wasn't enough to justify that high of a salary there for him. On the San Antonio side, Kawhi Leonard had 37 2 2. Pretty good game from Kawhi. I didn't have him anywhere. Lamarcus Aldridge in 35 minutes had 21 points. Four rebounds and one assist. Powell had eight and eight with uh, two assists and three blocks. So that was a pretty good game for Powell. Uh, no other notable, you know, performances on that side of the ball. You had Justin Simmons, who fooled a lot of people the first couple games of the year. Two and two with three assists. I mean, just not a very good game from San Antonio at all. So the final game of the night just went final and it was the uh <laughs> it was the Golden State Warriors blowing the doors off of the Portland Trailblazers uh I had a lot invested in uh Damian Lillard of course and he, I mean he had a decent game didn't really return the value that I wanted I mean 38 points for for 9.3k that wasn't really good so I did not miss on one of the four guys that I had stacked everywhere and it was the highest priced guy it was Damian Lillard. Uh, he went out and he had 31 points, a rebound, two assists, and one steal. And it seemed like at a point in the game, they just gave up. Like they didn't want to play anymore. That's just what it looked like to me. Like Curry started hitting. When, when Curry was missing, you know, they were running and it was, it was good. And then Curry started hitting threes because Ian Clark was hitting threes in the beginning to, keep, to give him a lead. And then when Curry started hitting threes too, Blazers were like, you know what, fuck this shit. This dude can't miss. And they kind of gave up, and that was the story of that game. Mo Harkless in uh, 26 minutes had six points and two rebounds. Uh, Afrika Camino, he was the one who was trying. He had six points, ten rebounds, three assists, three steals, and a block. Uh, Evan Turner, who I liked and had in a, a few different spots, uh, he had 14 points off of the bench in 20 minutes, uh, one rebound, two assists, and a steal. Uh, McCollum. He tried to shoot uh, shoot the three and, and keep them in the game, but it was just they were just too much. They were just too much on the Golden State side. And we're gonna check them out. They had uh, Durant. He uh, 30 minutes. He led the team in minutes. 30 minutes, 20 points, five rebounds, two assists, four steals, and a block. And they were just turning the ball over right and left. Draymond Green uh, played a really great game. He was on a triple double watch for a moment, but then you know they let up off the gas and they brought the reserves in, so it was over. And uh, Draymond Green had six points, eight rebounds, nine assists, and three steals with two blocks. Curry, 28 points, four rebounds, five assists, excuse me, four assists, and uh, <clears throat> he, he, shot, he shot the three. He shot the three pretty good. Five of ten, 50% from three, from three point. That was a really good game for Curry. We knew it was going to happen sooner or later. It happened tonight. Ian Clark came off of the bench in 25 minutes, had 22 points, two rebounds, one assist, and three steals. Now, that is your recap of uh, the Tuesday 
NBA DFS slate. Let's jump into Wednesday. This is a monster. This is a monster. This is going to be like a hell of a slate to tackle. Uh, I mean, we've got so much to cover with this. You gonna jump in? And I'm gonna, I mean, it looks like I'm creating a lineup, but I'm really not. I, I'm just gonna, I wanna put up the graphic for you all to see because this is a 10 game slate. This is a 10 game slate. Now, a lot of times when we get in slates this big, man, you may not wanna play as heavy in the, uh, in the, in the slate as, because you can play the, like an express or a turbo or something like that. If you're intimidated by this 10 game slate, you don't have to do that. I'm going in, I'm going in, I'm going in, but you don't have to, right? All right. Let's just look at, you know, uh, some of the, 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 the high price players on the slate. Number one, of course, you know, we got uh, Russell Westbrook uh, playing the Clippers and 12.9K. That's a lot. That's a lot. I'm not fucking with it. I'm just, at first glance, I'm not fucking with it. I haven't started to build any lineup shit. Haven't, haven't really looked at any stacks that I've, that I've, that I've been, haven't even gone, gone over the point total yet. But I can look at that 12.9K and I'm not fucking with that. No, that's crazy. The recent the, the recency bias would tell you that he can't keep playing the way he's playing. He can't keep doing that night in and night out. And if you would if you would now if you would exchange the uh, thirteen thousand thirteen k for how much eighty points? Yeah, that's cool. But he's not gonna get a triple double every night. He can't. Or can he? Hmm. Then we got James Harden, eleven point two k. Uh, playing the Knicks, sure bet. I love him to, 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 to do, do us dirty. The, uh, you, then you got Anthony Davis at 10.9K against Memphis. Of course, you're going to want to know, uh, check on the news and see if, if Gasol and Conley are going to be playing. Because if it's, it's going to be that type of blowout, they're not going to play Anthony Davis the whole game. So we want to check on that. Then you got Dame again. I like Dame tomorrow. He's always good coming off of a loss. Always. Always good coming off of a loss. Then you've got Blake Griffin, Chris Paul. Uh, Andre Drummond at 8,300 against Brooklyn. That's that's pretty appetizing. John Wall against Washington. I mean, excuse me, against Toronto. I like this game altogether. We're gonna get into that when we break down the point totals. But I like this game altogether. Uh, then we've got Paul Millsap at uh, 8K, which is a really good price for Paul Millsap, especially going up against the Lakers. I like that. Uh, Demar Derozan 7,800. He went up a little bit. Jimmy Butler against Boston. Kyle Lowry, Kimba at home. I like Kimba at home tomorrow. I always like him at home. You've got uh, Carmelo in Houston. They don't play defense, so I kind of like Carmelo tomorrow. I kind of like Carmelo tomorrow. Uh, Porzingis as well. You got Rudy Gobert at 7.1K. Eric Bledsoe, 6.9K. And this is just to give you an idea of the pricing before we before we get into it. Dennis Schroeder, 6.6K against uh, the Lakers. He's a, he's a pretty tough defender, but um, I ain't scared. Russell, uh, uh, D'Angelo Russell, 6.7K. I, I'm not scared. I'm really not. Uh, Mike Conley, Dwayne Wade at, at 6.5K against Boston. We need to check the news on Avery Bradley and see uh, where he's at with his recovery. I know he was, he didn't practice. Uh, Vic Oladipo, I like him. Now, and see, just for the sake of, just to do it, I'm going to roster Westbrook. I'm going to stack him. I'm him, Depot, and whoever the cheapest guy is that I can fit on my team that are going to play well. And that's what I'm going to roll like that. But I'm not going to be like, oh, I, oh, Westbrook here, Westbrook there, Westbrook everywhere. No, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. Uh, T Tim Frazier at 6.2K, so his price is going up. We got to get on him before it gets too high. Uh, Steven Adams, 6, 6, 6K, so he's on a new contract and got that. And went up like that, 6K? Nah, not Steven Adams. TJ Warren. Uh, going against Portland, I kind of like him again tomorrow. The, the bad game he had the other night probably would take people off of him. Uh, Markeith Morris is probably is somebody I'm mean, looking at, definitely. Ryan Anderson, Derrick Rose against Houston. I kind of like Derrick Rose tomorrow against Houston, definitely. The Houston defense sucks. 
and they're a very up-paced team. So I like I like them. Uh, for top 30 and B, um, the news was he's not going to be playing tomorrow. They're going to do a uh, Jaleel Okafor. So we want to keep our uh, keep our attention uh, on that. Make sure that is the correct news. Uh, we've got Kid Gilchrist <clears throat> against Philadelphia, who I like. Um, we got look out for Robert Covington because he had a really shitty game, which wasn't really a bad game. He just didn't score, but he did everything else. So his price may be a little depressed uh, coming out of this one. Nikola Miritic had a really good game. He's at 5.1K. Booker's at 5K. Marvin Williams looks really good against Philadelphia at that 5K price tag. Okafor, he's 4.9K, and he's going to play. He was out today, but he's going to play tomorrow. Is that Let's check on this. Okafor, who's scheduled to sit out Tuesday's game against the Magic for rest purposes, they expect to see his, play, his playing time restriction lifted to 24 minutes. So that's... You ever seen Chalk? Here you go. That's Chalk. That's going to be the Chalkiest play tomorrow. He's going to be everywhere. You're going to... Every, every lineup, probably even yours, you're going to see him. At 4.9K, you're gonna see him everywhere. Definitely, you're gonna see you're gonna see him everywhere. Against Charlotte too, banged up Cody Zeller, Spencer Hawes, Frank Kaminsky. Oh yeah, you're gonna see him everywhere. So let's go ahead and break down the point totals and get into it. Uh, we were just talking about somebody from this game, Philadelphia, going to Charlotte. It is a 195.5 uh, point total. Of course, you already know who I like in this game. I like Kimba. Uh, anytime he's at home, they got to go with him. Um, they're giving up 12 points to the Philadelphia 76ers. Embiid is not playing. We already discussed that. They traded Jeremy Grant. So you're going to get uh, some Sarek in this game. He had a really good game tonight. You're going to get some uh, Hollis Thompson. All the guys that we just talked about are going to be in play for this game. Now, when it comes to the bigs, when it comes to the bigs in this game, I can go Zeller. Did we find out he's not going to be on a strict uh, minute restriction? I, I can go Zeller. I can go Kaminsky in this game if, I, if I'm looking for value and I want to go cheap. But uh, I think on a slate this big, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to lock my stars down. I'm not going to make. I'm not going to go stars and scrubs, but I'm going to lock my stars down like like I did today. These these are the guys who I'm fucking with. This is my core, and I'm rolling with my core. And I'm going to sprinkle in value how it opens up during the day. That's how I attack the slate, a slate this big, a 10-game slate, 9-game slate. That's how you attack it. Uh, the next game is going to be the Toronto uh, <clears throat> Raptors going to Washington to take on the Wizards. This is a minus one in favor of the Washington Wizards. So they're giving up one point um, to Toronto. It's a 203 under or over under. So that means Vegas says it's going to be a close game. And it's going to be over 200. Stack. Potential game stack. You fire up Lowry. You fire up DeRozan. You like Valanchunas because Gortat is not a really good defender on the block. Uh, you like John Wall. Lowry's a good defender, and John Wall is just a better offensive player than Lowry is a defensive player. So you like John Wall. I, I can see John Wall triple doubling in this game. Really, like I like John Wall tomorrow. I like Larry DeRozan Wall. So many of my lineups are going to be Larry DeRozan Wall, and I'm gonna fill in everybody else. Uh, you can go um, Marquise Morris. You could in this game if you want to get some scrub love. You could go Kelly Oubre because I really see who, the first guy <clears throat> other than John Wall is going to probably get shut down. Like uh, Otto Porter is probably not gonna have a great game. In comes Kelly Oubre. He does. So if you're looking for that, that looking for the cheap, you're looking for the cheap, you can definitely, um, I say, get your hands on Kelly Oubre, and he should pay dividends for you, easily making value uh, five, six times value. Uh, Damari Carroll, now he disappointed a lot last game. So he's probably somebody who they're not going to be on. But he's a really good defender. He can shoot the three. Uh, they gave him the big money. I, I don't I don't see I don't see a problem with rostering uh, Damari Carroll. I really don't. He's somebody who I who I who I could say, hey, I I take a shot on him 
and he's definitely not uh, very expensive. Coming in, let's, let's check the price on the Mark Four point six k. That's not bad at all. That's not bad at all. And he's small forward, power forward, eligible. That's not bad at all. All right. So next game is going to be the LA Lakers <clears throat> at the Atlanta Hawks. Uh, the Hawks are a very scrappy team, play really good perimeter defense. Um, it's a 208 total. It's pretty high. And the Atlanta Hawks are giving up 11.5 points. Now, of course, I like the usual suspects in this game. This is a Dwight Howard revenge game. Although, I don't know if you can consider it revenge. If, if you play for two or more teams, I don't know if you can consider it revenge. But he probably, he, I think he would want to go to L.A. and have a really great game. So I do like Dwight Howard in this game. I like Paul Millsap in this game. Uh, on the other side of the ball, I like Randall with the handle. I think he is, he's going to have a, a really good game, I think so. And I don't like D'Angelo Russell as much as I would if they were in L.A. Because he plays a lot better at home. But I still think that against uh, Schroeder, he can have a good game. I think he can have a good game. And the price tag did come down a little bit. So I, I think, you know, I think he is definitely rosterable in this game. You look at uh, look to the bench, you're going to have some uh, Jordan Clarkson jumping off of the bench. Probably going to be a decent play. Uh, if you want some cheap, some cheap love, scrub love on this, is the first big off of Atlanta bench is going to be Mike Muscala because Mike Scott is out for four weeks with an elbow issue. So you might want to look at Mike Muscala uh, as somebody who is can fill in your roster at five times value. See, if, because if you can get the cheap guy, to make five times value, and then you can pay up for studs that will get six, seven, eight times value. That's that's in your favor. That's what you want to do, especially in your cash games. Uh, next game is going to be Detroit uh, Pistons going to Brooklyn. Brooklyn is bad. Um, I'm not doing the Jeremy Lin thing against uh, Detroit. They are really good perimeter defense. A really great rebounding team. If I was going to go anywhere in this game, I would go to the bigs. I would like uh, Trevor Booker as well as um, Brooke Lopez. Uh, I don't like I don't like any, any perimeter play in this game for Brooklyn on the Detroit side. Of course, I like Drummond. I think Drummond's going to be a really good play in this game. I also like uh, <clears throat> Marky Marky Morris. I like Marky Morris in this game as well as Ish Smith. Because let me tell you something, uh, Jeremy Lin is a horrible defender. He, he, he is like up there with like James Harden. He is the, the, like one of the shittiest defenders in the league. And Ish Smith at that cheap price, Ish didn't really have a great game um, today. So there's a very good chance that he could be uh, fairly cheap. Let's check the price on Ish Smith. Yeah, he's 5.5k. That's not bad. For somebody who's going to see Jeremy Lin defense. So I do like uh, Ish Smith uh, in this game. Uh, KCP is also another guy. Even though even though uh, Rondé Hollis Jefferson is a pretty good defender, I still think, you know, we can see some 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 really good uh, perimeter play from the Detroit side of the ball. Next game is going to be the Houston Rockets going to New York to punish my Knicks. This is actually a one and a half uh, point total. The Knicks are giving up one and a half. It's a two thirteen. Uh, it's a two thirteen point total, which I believe is the is that is that the highest one on the slate? Oh shit! My Knicks got the highest point total on the slate. Well, Phoenix and Portland hasn't come out yet. Uh, right? Yeah, Phoenix and Portland Portland hasn't come out yet. That's probably gonna be the highest. But so this is one of the highest ones on the slate. Fire up Harden, bro. Fire up Harden. I, I'm trying to think of a way now where I can do, where I can get Lowry, DeRozan, Kimba, Harden, and then find that value throughout the day to really push my lineup and put it where it needs to be. If I can fuel my lineup with uh, value plays in those other positions and then go with that big four, I think I'll be, I think I'll be on to something there. Uh, I like. I already talked talk about Carmelo. I kind of like him in this game. I like Porzingis. I like Derrick Rose. Uh, this is a stackable game. At 213, this is, this is one of the highest point totals of the of the night, but it also is one of the lowest uh, point differentials. So anytime you have a game like that, 
that's a game that you can definitely look at as a, a possible game stack. On the Houston side of the ball, you got Eric Gordon, who is really good. Uh, you, I, I wouldn't mess with a big on the Houston side. I just wouldn't. I mean, if you're gonna if you're gonna get it anywhere from from the Houston Rockets, you're gonna get it on the perimeter. You're gonna get it from Eric Gordon. You're gonna get it from uh, James Harden. You're gonna get it from Trevor Ariza, maybe. And he may be like a nice contrarian play. I like. I think I like Trevor Ariza in this game because Melo don't play defense either. Next game is gonna be Chicago and Boston. This is uh, the Bulls going to Boston to take on the Bulls. Uh, excuse me, take on the Celtics. It's a 211 uh, over under with a minus three and a half in favor of the Boston Celtics. They are giving Chicago three and a half points. Um, <clears throat> I like Isaiah, of course, man. I've been rolling with him so far throughout the season. Uh, we've got to check the news again on Avery Bradley, see if he's going to be in the lineup. If not, uh, you've got the young guys off of the bench to. Uh, Oh man, the, 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 the two rookies that they have in Boston. Let me check up, check up on them right now. It's, you, you got to, you got to be aware of them cats because they're really good, actually. Let's see. And we've got. Um, let me see. Also, let's, let's see, let's see, let's see. These are two two young guys who are really who are really good. Now, Marcus Smart may come back in this game, so you might not see Jalen Brown or um, Terry Rozier, but we want to check the news throughout the day because if Avery Bradley is out, if Avery Bradley is out and Marcus Smart is in, I think that makes uh, Rozier and um, Jalen Brown even a more sure bet because Marcus Smart is not good. He's just not very good. That's just what it is. Uh, on the Boston or Chicago side, I really hate um, roster and perimeter players against against uh, Boston because they're so sound defensively. But if every Bradley doesn't play, I like him. I like Rondo for some revenge going to Boston again. I like uh, Dwayne Wade. I like Jimmy Butler. I like Miritic off of the bench. Um, I also like... Robin Lopez to bang out with him. So this could be a, another possible game stack. I'm sure I'm going to have pieces of this game uh, in my lineups tomorrow. The next game is going to be the New Orleans Pelicans at the Memphis Grizzlies. They're going to the grindhouse. And, uh, we got, of course, we got news we got to be waiting on. We got to find out. We got to know if Gasol is going to be playing and if Conley is going to be playing. If they are, I think you can definitely fire up uh, – Anthony Davis, if they're not playing, they're going to get blowed out. So Anthony Davis is not going to see a lot of run. Um, I like Tim Frazier, man. I'm going to roll with him until until he shows me otherwise. I like Tim Frazier, even against uh, Mike Conley if he plays, uh, who's a really good perimeter defender. It's a 206.5 uh, total with minus 5.5 going towards the, the New Orleans side. New Orleans is getting 5.5 points. So, yeah, I, I, think, I think we can – now, and, and this – if if Conley and um, if Conley and Gasol are out, the Memphis roster is trash. I wouldn't advise you to roster anybody from there, and it's not going to be a two or six over under. It's going to be lower score than that. It's going to be bad, but I think they should play. So we're going to uh, stay tuned for that and make sure that we are, we're up on that news when it comes out as soon as it does. Um, next game we're going to get into, and the final game on tomorrow's slate. Excuse me. That's not. It's not. This is the lowest point total on the slate. Is the Dallas uh, Mavericks going to Utah to take on the Jazz? It is a 188 over under with minus four going uh, to the direction of the Dallas uh, Mavericks. They're getting four points in this game. Man, I don't know where to begin with this. I can tell you, I do like George Hill. I like George Hill in this game. He's going to be seeing uh, Darren Williams, which is, you know, like a swinging gate. I like I like George Hill in this game. Uh, I think Gobert is going to be a really, really good uh, play in this game as far as, you know, getting after the ball, getting their rebounds and blocks because they do try to score uh, in a low post a lot in Dallas. we got to get the news on Dirk, see if he's going to be playing um, mm, on the Dallas side of the ball. Wesley Matthews doesn't doesn't interest me. 
Um, GG Berea is probably a play. GG Berea may be a good play. Somebody off of the bench. I even like I even like Utah bench. I like Shelvin Mack in this game. Uh, I think that uh, Utah can jump all over Dallas at home, and we can see a little scrub love come from the Utah way. So look at Shelvin Mack if you're looking for you know a value play, somebody to fill in your lineups as you pay for somebody else. Uh, the next game is gonna be Portland and Phoenix. The, the total hasn't come out on that yet, but I'm telling you, fire up Lillard. He's going to be shitting. He's going to be pissed. He just got blowed out at home, and he's going to take on the Phoenix Suns. They're going to blow the doors off of them. I like. I think you can fire up McCollum. Uh, uh, Aminu is probably a good play. On the Phoenix side of the ball, I like Warren, and I think the game's going to be a blowout. So you can definitely look at Tyler Eulis and Marcus Chris, the rookies they have. Uh, we're going to wait for some news to come out on um, Devin Booker to see if he's going to be playing or not because he was out the last game. Uh, so check on the point totals throughout the day. Find out exactly uh, what it is and where you can find value and scoring in this game. The last game is going to be the Oklahoma City Thunder going to the L.A. Clippers. This is a 207 uh, total with the Clippers giving up seven points to the Oklahoma City Thunder. Uh I mean, who am I to tell you not to spend 12.9K on Russell Westbrook? I'm your friend. Don't do it. Don't do it everywhere. I mean, if you want to make a lineup and just throw him in there, that's cool. But, you know, I don't think his ownership is going to be as high as it's been. It came down last time once it got uh, over 12,000. But, I mean, he's approaching 13 bands. I mean, that's like, oh, my God. That's so much of your cap that you go to spend on one player. And of course, he's been making value, but it's got to come to an end at some point. And I think uh, against the Clippers, in a minus matchup against uh, Chris Paul, I think it does come to an end here. I think uh, he doesn't make value, and I just talked myself out of him. I am not. Maybe one lineup. <laughs> maybe one lineup. Maybe one lineup. Maybe, maybe one stack with Oklahoma City. Uh, on the other side of the ball, uh, I definitely like uh, Chris Paul and Blake Griffin. Uh, DeAndre Jordan kind of proved me wrong because we had not seen uh, very much <clears throat> Blake Griffin over the last year. It was just the DeAndre Jordan and Chris Paul show, and I didn't, really didn't know where DeAndre was going to fit in once Blake got back, but it seems to me that Blake and DeAndre have developed a little rapport, and they have a two-man game between the two of them. So I think all three of them are in play in this game. Uh, if you're looking for some scrub loves, you got um, Jeremy Grant just got over there to Oklahoma City. I don't know if he's going to be active for tomorrow, but he was traded from the Philadelphia 76ers. They got rid of Ersan Ilyasova. Uh, Kyle Singler, somebody you can look at. On the, the Clippers side, the bench runs deep. Uh, the coach's son is... Uh, Always in play for people that want to roster the coach's son. I don't. Um, Jamal Crawford is somebody you can look at, definitely. And this game is going to be so high-paced because that's the way Russell, Russell, Russell Westbrook, he sets the tone for the game. It's going to be a high-paced game, a lot of scoring. I think it's going to, going to exceed this 207 point total. So uh, you can definitely look to both benches when you're trying to find value. Now, uh, that has been the... <clears throat> Review from last night's game and the breakdown of today's DFS slate, the 10-game slate. Get in there. Get you some money. Uh, we went out today and we tripled our buy-in, which is a really good day for the DFS sweatshop. I am your host, the DFS Jerusalem, and you can follow me on Twitter at DFS Jerusalem. Uh, it has been such a wonderful experience. Just four slates in. Uh, with all of you riding with me, man, we converse all the time on Twitter. You let me know what you're thinking. I let you know what I'm thinking. We mix it up. Um, the YouTube channel is actually growing. I started out a few weeks ago with 10 subscribers. I can only find 10 people that will listen to me. Now we together have, we, we are approaching 700 uh, subscribers. We're looking at having uh, 5,000 by the All-Star break. I need your help, so like, comment share, subscribe. Uh, if you uh, want to help further with the show, if you want to help help with the uh, the betterment, the overall improvement of the show, you are more than welcome to uh, patronize the YouTube page. And you're going to see a link that is like a tip jar, fan funding. You can definitely uh, throw anything you got, you'd like to uh, contribute in there as well. 
Uh, this has been, again, your DFS Jerusalem. Thank you very much, and y'all enjoy your hump day slate. Let's go out and let's get this money.